Hello, my name is Sarah Achina and I'm a Lebanese and French artist based in London. I have very recently graduated from a master's in painting at the Royal College of Art. My practice main interest is centered around the body, but when I say body, I think of bodies as biologies, as physiological intricate machines made of layers and textures and that ultimately make up a wondrous infinite landscape hidden right under our skin. One of the main components of our inner landscapes are fluids, and we know that fluids stain. I love stains. They represent what spills out and what is not easily controlled or contained. They're partly accidental and have a life of their own. Our large, porous and breathing membrane that is our skin is our border. It is the clean looking bow that keeps all these stains nicely in place. The surfaces of my work with their tiny little weaving holes, like tiny little pores, act like skins too. Porous, they absorb what I allow to escape. They absorb the fluid, I mentioned, but also the angst that comes with living. And for this reason, I see my fabrics as healing skins on which I paint stories. To do so, I rejected the stretchers and their immutable rigidity. Our bodies are not rigid. They are supple, fragile, and in constant movement. Also, whoever said our vision was square, like the usual canvases we're used to? Instead, I think it extends on both sides and is not delimited in such a dry way. Loose fabric sways, folds, and reacts to its environment. Most importantly, it is collapsible, and so are we. That is how I approach making lately. I tried to create surfaces that mirror bodies, all different from one another, all with a fragile quality, but also strong, or at least repairable. But amongst the messiness of fluids, our bodies are also complex, which sheds light on what I call the flip side of my practice. The much more controlled side of things. I have so far spoken of dirty, stainy elements repulsive organic fragments that constitute us. But with my fascination for what we try to conceal daily comes my passion for the tools of concealment. In other words, the thing we use to quote unquote, make it pretty, add a bit, add a bit of this human sophistication to it. And so embroidery and ornamental elements are a recurring pattern in my practice. The contra contrast between what spills out and what is meticulously controlled are opposed forces I like to battle with. There is in this tiny action of embroidering or pattern making a powerful, almost majestic quality. It is tiny and tedious, but it feels so big and important. And so my choice for decorating large parts of the work comes as a way, I think, of adding weight to the piece. I don't see the decorative as anything superfluous or superficial. I think it catches the eye and has this hypnotic quality of drawing the viewer in. It calls to our senses because we want to touch as our gaze gets lost in the pattern. And there is not only a meditative dimension in the making of such detail, but also in the looking at it for long periods of time. And so I think that my love for all things ornamental comes from the fact that I was raised in a Christian Orthodox family. In this branch of Christianity, rituals and beliefs go through worshipping icons, but also building extremely opulent looking churches. And as a kid, I was mesmerized by such overwhelming beauty. The ornamental became closely knit with this idea of the sacred. What was sacred had to be beautiful. And the source of that very beauty lied in the time spent making it. So time spent becomes an inevitable reflection of the care put into it. Didn't we say our bodies were temple? And so in, in another way also, I see the time spent as my act of rebellion against our fast-paced world, fueled by immediate gratification and instantly consumed images. Not an easy task taking your time when one knows that productivity and production are the new modes of validation, validation. And so stitching in the same way meditation does, teaches us to just be, to sit and focus our attention on a repetitive 
task hours on end. Finally, if I focus a lot of attention on the body, it is because I find our biology reassuring and its repetitive mechanism humbling. I see the notion of physiological bodies as a way to enable new forms of language. I am exhausted by language the way we know it and feel that language exhausts itself. I won't deny words fascinating quality, but there is only so much they can describe and the expression lost for words takes all its meaning here. There is in language a finite quality and that is when words substitute themselves to the body. Back to the body, back to the basics.